this may in fact be one of the few times where the president of the United States is actually the most important or the most powerful person in the world. So just bear with me. I have a few notes for this episode because there's so much to cover here. Now, you might think, okay, this is just a boring episode about a plane and what abilities and capabilities it has. No, there's a whole process behind this and it connects a whole bunch of things. So let's jump right into it. Now, if you could just uh, bear with me with my notes here. Now, the, why do I say that in these scenarios, the president then becomes the actual quote unquote leader of the free world, the most important person and the most powerful and protected person? Because one of the downsides of the shadow government is that when things go belly up in the case of a literal doomsday scenario or something close to that, all the power falls onto the public front end simply because there's more of what is called COG, continuity of government. There's a much more established situation there and a much more established, I guess we could say, structure and com chain of command, so to speak. Now, with that being said, there's a few different things here that I want to discuss. First off, the doomsday plane technically has never been officially admitted by the United States. Other countries have admitted they have it. As a matter of fact, just a quick fun fact, as of the time I'm recording this, I believe it was yesterday, December the 9th, that the Russian government stated that Vladimir Putin's doomsday plane was actually hijacked and um, not flown and not turned on, but a lot of the belongings on it were stolen. Now, again, it's just a bit of a fun fact, but let's move on. So what I'm going to be doing right now as I'm speaking is I'm going to be putting up a handful of different pictures of alleged doomsday planes. Now, if we look, for example, at Business Insider, at the Business Insider article, what we'll find is that it is supposedly a roughly $220 million plane that is a Boeing 747, and some of the capabilities have been revealed. With that being said, that is just one of many doomsday planes. There's more than one. And so the pictures I'm putting up that you've already seen are either alleged real pictures or mock-ups of what allegedly there actually is. Now, with that being said, when a doomsday plane is put into effect all the way, what happens here is that there are multiple planes that utilize invisibility and cloaking devices to surround the main doomsday plane that has the president on it. With that being said, it's far more advanced than you may think, and at the same time, it actually looks substantially different than what they're showing the press. So, if we uh, continue here, we need to understand and establish a few things first. So let's take a look. What are ions? Ions are utilized by radio frequency ion propulsion. So if we take a look at spacepropulsion.com, the overview here, and I quote, is our electric space propulsion expertise is based, based on the space proven radio frequency ion technology, or RIT for short. Within this field, we produce complete propulsion systems, modules, thrusters, and related components. Now, there's a handful of different layers if we take a look here. Now, if we look, for example, at scientificamerican.com, we'll find that it says here, silent and simple ion engine powers a plane with no moving parts. This is nothing new, guys, and I'm sure that the... Um, the crash of Roswell and the reverse engineering of UFO craft has established this to be the case. And this is definitely not any type of piece of new technology. I would even dare to say this is something that was established and successfully completed so long ago, even you, though you can argue that projects are never fully completed, but you get my point, that they laugh at this behind the scenes when, they, when we are in awe and in shock of the small things that are being leaked and or disclosed to the press and to the public. Now, when we look at it as well, what we're going to find too is that according to Business Insider, what we're going to see is that the plane harnesses the capabilities of nuclear blasts and actually uses it to power itself. So the fuel system is completely obsolete, completely outdated. I mean, guys, let, let's just put it this way. Give or take a hundred years ago, there was a gentleman who developed an electrical car that's simply charged with electricity. Now, given it wasn't as advanced as the Tesla cars are, but the point being this, the suppression of technology is real. Maybe not in all industries, maybe for different reasons in different industries, but overall, the suppression is there. Now, let's jump into the next part of this, which is we need to understand the Hoover Dam. Why the Hoover Dam? Well... If we take a look, what we're going to find is that the Hoover Dam is in fact in Nevada, located in Nevada, 
and the actual address is Nevada 89005 in the United States. Why do I say that? So there's a few different layers to this. First off, we need to understand that there is allegedly, I would dare to say almost to this point, I can confidently say there is a deep underground military base underneath the Hoover Dam, one of the main military bases where experimentation of all sorts goes on from hybrid programming all the, or hybrid genetic splicing all the way to propulsion systems to reverse engineering technology to laser weapons, you name it. Now, it's a little bit ironic that this is brought up. And the reason why I say that is because if we take a look at another layer of this, which is the predictive programming layer, what we're going to find is that there have been actually multiple movies, whether they're action movies, science fiction, or fictional or nonfiction, that have disclosed the location of an alleged underground military base right above the Hoover Dam. Perfect example would be the very first Transformers movie that came out in 2008 or I think it was 2008 or 2009. Anyways, if you remember the scene where Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox are speaking to the secret Sector 7 agents right on the bridge of the Hoover Dam, and then they head underground to go take a look at the Transformers. Now, yes, you might say, Dave, what the hell are you talking about? That's a fictional film. Listen, it is predictive programming to the smallest extent because it is trying to imply that underground military bases are real and even though you might say listen this was 12 13 years ago what the hell are you talking about we need to understand that predictive programming is a long-term system that is implemented into our minds to allow us to think that for example that in the short term because we've seen it in a movie there's a good chance it doesn't exist in real life because the the normal logical way of uh, any civilized person is well if i've seen it in a movie obviously they wouldn't have it in real life because why would they throw it in a movie to hint at the fact that it's real and i and i can understand that form of thinking i'm not going to lie but at the same time it's made for you to think that in the short term but in the long term it is a fantastic way to implant and subversively insert these types of this type of knowledge let's say or these types of contexts and events within your mind so say if they reveal which they probably never will, but let's just say hypothetically for the sake of this conversation, they reveal 30, 40 years from now that there is in fact an underground military base under the Hoover Dam, people are going to say, you know what, that sounds about right. Why? Because they've seen films like Transformers and other films, whether they're fiction or nonfiction, and they can't put their finger on it, but they'll think in the back of their head, you know what, that makes sense. Why? They're more than likely to be self-convinced when it was inserted through some type of major mass broadcasting film or some type of, I guess we could say, form of entertainment. And that is why the CIA has their hands in Hollywood so much. With that being said, let's move on a little bit more. So what we're also going to find here is that the White House underground connects to certain deep underground military bases, not all of them, because again, the president in the everyday world is not privy to all of the classified information, because in a lot of cases, as I've said many times before, the president is a placeholder. He, he simply, at most, he's there for eight years. The guys within the CIA, the Pentagon, the military industrial complex, the ones who are supposed to brief the president on, on everything, who really decide not to, because again, who's going to tell them what to brief him on and what not to? That's just entrusted in the foundation of the system, okay? Those are the same guys that are there for 30, 40, 50 years. So presidents change places. And yes, don't get me wrong, I'm sure presidents are, are briefed on many, many different things. And I'm not saying that they're completely oblivious. I'm just saying there are certain classified levels that have been proven to be substantially above that of the president's access. Again, quick example, when the president goes to Area 51, he is considered a VIP guest. That is a big thing. Granted, VIP, you get a lot of access, but there are certain parts in Area 51 that the president cannot go to. So, the White House underground military bases, military base rather, I don't know if it uses the Mach 2 speed trains to connect, but it does take them directly to the Hoover Dam. Now, are they allowed access into the Hoover Dam and things like this? I'm not sure. Now, you might say, Dave, what does this have to do with a doomsday plane? Allegedly, and I say allegedly because I cannot confirm this, so I'm not going to say that something is confirmed when I cannot prove it to you guys. There is a part of the Hoover Dam that transforms itself. Uh, sorry, I don't want to use the word transforms. I feel like that's a little bit of an oversimplification. That is built purp purposefully and constantly modified every five to ten years to come out of a certain part of the Hoover Dam in a massive plane, but it is blended in to look like 
it is part of the Hoover Dam, so adversaries in other countries would least suspect it. Now again, there are multiple different kinds of planes. There's ones with laser weapons, there's ones that are camouflaged, there there's one even in particular, and I'll put the image up right now, of a, a, a doomsday plane that goes into space. So... To people who say that the space frontier is BS and things like this, listen, it's right under our noses, guys. And I'm not saying this because I want to believe it. I'm saying it because if we take a look at the, the drop seeding, if you call it, of the information that slowly has been coming out, particularly within the last few years, what we're going to find is that overall, and I've said this before, there is a preparation of things that are coming. But with that being said, what we also have to look at and consider is the fact that they're covering, pardon my English, they're covering their asses. So that if there ever is an emergency, people would not be entirely freaked out. So as you could see, there are multiple different levels to all of this. Now, according to FlyingSaucerArea52.com, there is a secret tunnel two to four miles underground leading from Area 51 to Area 52. And the real UFO alien experimental research for back engineering technology exists in a large underground base 15 miles below Hoover Dam, Lake Mead and Boulder City, said to be the size of New York City, end quote. Do I believe that? Absolutely. A hundred percent. Doesn't mean you guys have to believe it, but I would dare to say I'm probably 85, 90% sure this is the case. There's too much evidence to suggest otherwise. Now you might say, okay, why are these bases so important to the doomsday planes? Because each base takes the president to a different plane and a different location, depending on the situation. Now, it's not like they just have one, I guess you could say one of each, but they have multiple of each strategically placed in different locations for multiple different reasons. Mount Rushmore is another one, believe it or not. Mount Rushmore has a secret base as well. Not as big, not as advanced, not as technical as the one underneath the Hoover Dam or the one underneath Area 51 or the one in uh, New Mexico but or the one under allegedly the Denver airport, which I'll be doing an episode on soon. But it has enough to sufficiently provide and keep uh, maintenance of weaponry, defense systems, and protecting important enough people on this planet. So I guess you could say this is one of the downsides to the shadow government. They understand that in a serious doomsday scenario, they will not be the first ones to be protected, which I imagine they think a doomsday scenario would be highly unlikely. So again, we have to just consider that. Now, the next thing I want to jump into which is a little bit interesting, actually very interesting rather, but I would like you guys to take this with a grain of salt, as will I, as have I, because there is a theory that some of these doomsday planes that are being tested are the same planes that are utilizing, of course, DEWs, direct energy weapons, but more importantly, testing these weapons on populations of people within countries outside of the West. So we have right now an Indian virus going on. Uh, an Indian illness, sorry, a mysterious one that they cannot explain. People are experiencing all kinds of symptoms. They're, they're dying, they're getting paralysis, they're freaking out. There are some of them are acting like uh, zombies like you would see in World War Z. And I, like I said before in my Unleash the Kraken episodes, they need to contain it. I don't care how much, how much effort it takes. They must contain it or else it's going to spread, particularly in a highly populated country such as India. Any country that's in the millions of people, it will spread very easily. With that being said, there is a theory that some of these doomsday planes are being tested on small segmented areas or vicinities of countries around the world in order to see how effective they are. Now, with that being said, I want to bring up the fact that there's something called Havana Syndrome, where years ago, um, Canadian and American ambassadors and representatives of the United States government and others went to a, a, a place in Havana, a political establishment, and they're experiencing now symptoms of the usage that match up directly with that of a direct energy weapon. So you might say, Dave, what does that have to do with anything? That could just easily as be, chi be China experimenting or Russia experimenting with direct energy weapons or doomsday planes similar to the one the United States has. So the point here is that it is a constant adversarial chess game, even for doomsday planes, the planes that are supposed to protect not world leaders, but humanity as a whole. Doesn't matter if you're black or white or Hispanic or Asian or anything of the sort. Doesn't matter. It is made to protect us. And, the, and I do have to say very quickly, the fact that there is some constant battle between the two, and these weapons are being tested on 
populations of people without any type of approval of any sort. Again, we can't prove it, but we can find evidence that comes close to alleging this. It just goes to show how, I guess we could say, disdained and, and corrupt many of them are. So with that being said... I want you guys to let me know what you think because I have not figured out all of the locations. I've taken many days to try and disclose many of the locations where a lot of these planes are. But at the end of the day, the technology that these planes have or these ships or whatever you want to call it are so advanced. We're talking lasers, cloaking, hard li- harnessing, sorry, the utilization of nuclear blasts to absorb and utilize this energy that could make the planes, very large ones, go on for days and days and days without the need of fuel. So, please let me know what you guys think. I think it is an extremely interesting topic, and we will catch you guys next time. Thank you.